Want to know how to securely splice two or more wires with a soldering iron? I'm going to show you how. Hi YouTube, my name's Jeff and I'm the Vegil Guy. Today I'm going to be looking at splicing, joining together two or more wires securely with a soldering iron. This was a subscriber requested video and I always do my best to help out my subscribers. Here I'll be showing how I splice and the techniques I use but do check out the videos of other YouTubers out there. My way might not necessarily be the right way for you, and it certainly might not be the best. As I've said, I'm gonna be using a soldering iron. There are off the shelf plastic connectors you can use, but I've heard mixed results about these, and I much prefer the belt and braces approach that a soldering iron always gives me. You don't need much equipment, just a soldering iron, flux cord solder, wire cutters, a sharp blade, and insulation tape or heat shrink. You might also want a pair of pliers, a utility knife, wire strippers, or even a splicing pliers if you've got them, but I'm happy with what you see here. So let's begin by quickly asking, what is splicing? Well, I would define splicing as a means of permanently joining two or more wires together to enable uninterrupted current flow and the emphasis there has to be on uninterrupted flow. That's the key. That's why I prefer to solder my joints, as I personally feel it's the most secure method of joining wires. Let's get started with a nice easy method of joining two separate wires together, effectively making them one. Here you can see a green wire and a brown wire. The first step is to remove some of the wire sheath to access the copper wire inside. I like to use a sharp blade for this, just gently press down on a wooden block and roll the cable. Let the blade do the work. You'll feel when it hits the firmer copper. Do the same with the second wire. Then simply twist the wires together. I just want to raise the wires here and this roll of tape is a nice height. Now here's an important tip. Soldering irons oxidize very quickly, so it's important to clean them regularly. Use a bit of scrap sandpaper and just give them a very careful rub. Mind your fingers, obviously you don't want to burn yourself. A quick rub will reveal the solder that's beneath the oxidized layer. People often bring the soldering iron in from above. Don't do that here. Bring it in from underneath. Heat rises and you'll have more control. Dab a small amount of solder on the end of the iron. This is called tinning. Now touch the solder to the top of the wire. This way the solder melts when the copper is hot enough and it flows downwards, filling the copper strands and forming a perfect joint. Drag the iron away, ensuring you've left no jagged edges. Once cooled, reduce the length a little. If you prefer to use heat shrink, place it over the soldered joint and use your fingers to feel if it's in the right place. Touch it against the body of the iron. This tends to be a little cooler than the tip. Avoid touching it to the wire as it will melt. Twist and turn it and let the heat shrink do its job. And that's sorted. It's a good job and it'll work well, but it doesn't look very pretty. This next method is my preferred choice. So same again, use a sharp blade to reveal the copper, but this time leave a generous amount showing. Cut away more than you need. Here I use the wire cutters to free the sheath. Notice that they are open, not closed. Just enough pressure to pull. You may prefer to use pliers. Thank you. 
if you prefer a heat shrink. This time you'll need to remember to slip this on now. Cross the bare ends over each other. Think of them as cross swords meeting near the hilt. Then begin to wrap as if covering the hilt and the handle. Do it on both sides. Don't worry about the excess wire, we can trim that in a moment. Again clean the soldering iron and tin it. Place the tip under the wire and the solder on top of the wire, allowing the solder to melt downwards. When cool, trim away the excess. Trim away any sharp points. Make sure nothing sharp is left to puncture the heat shrink. This could potentially lead to an electrical short. The heat shrink is slid over and heated with the iron again. And that, I think you'll agree, is a much neater job. Now let's look at joining three wires. This is what I think about when it comes to splicing, a situation where there's already an existing wire, such as this blue one, and we need to get another wire into it, to splice into it, to power another circuit or maybe a relay. We can see this here with this blue wire and this green one. We want to splice them. And the easiest way to do this is to simply cut the blue wire. The ends are trimmed in the same way using a sharp blade. All three bare ends are then twisted firmly together. Clean the soldering iron and tin it. Let the copper wire come into contact with the iron, then touch the solder to the top of the copper, allowing the solder to melt downwards. Stroke the wires away to avoid jagged edges. As you can see, a very good bond. Trim to a preferred length. This time I'm going to apply electrician's insulation tape. It's important to pull tightly as you do this and wrap it round nice and firmly to create a good bond. Here I'm deliberately over wrapping it. I've gone further than the tip of the wire. This lets me bend a little flap over and this in turn is also wrapped. Now I can be confident that all the bare wire is covered. Squeeze it gently, make sure it's all nicely wrapped and it's done. It's a good reliable job, but it's not as neat as my next method. Same again, blue and green, but this time we're not going to cut the blue wire. Instead, we're going to remove the sheathing whilst the wire is still intact. Usual approach, a sharp blade and a rolling motion. Leave an inch or so space and then do the same thing again. Now use the tip of the blade and carefully slice between the cuts you've already made. Feel the copper with the tip of the blade. Then peel the sheathing away. This isn't as tricky as I'm making it look to be honest. The problem is my hands were freezing at the time. 
You may sever a couple of strands of copper, but this won't matter. Just smooth everything out. This time, reveal a good length of green wire, two or three inches. Again, I'm pulling the sheath away with the wire cutters. You may prefer to use pliers. Lay the two cables alongside each other, then wrap the long green end around the blue. Nice and firmly does it. Clean the iron, then tin it. Place it under the wire and put the solder on top. The solder melts down and into the wire strands. Once cool, check for any jagged spots and trim these if necessary. Again, I'll use insulation tape here. Wrap one way, making sure it's nice and tight, then wrap the other way. And that's a finished splice and a finished video. I hope you found it helpful. Please remember, I'm no expert, just a keen amateur. So it's always worth checking out some other videos on the subject. This was a subscriber request and I was happy to oblige. So if you have a video request, do get in touch. If I can help, I certainly will. If you enjoyed watching this video, please like it. If you didn't like it, then why not tell me why? I'm always eager to improve my videos. Your comments and questions are always welcomed and I really love to hear from you so do drop a message below. Please do check out my YouTube channel and of course my other videos. I've got 40 plus videos out there now and I'm receiving some fantastic feedback and seeing some real interest from subscribers so thank you all for that. If you haven't subscribed yet please do so. And that's it for now folks. Thanks very much for watching.